Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. And make sure to stick at the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have 2 to the power of x is equal to 20 to the power of 8. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log on both sides. So now I have log 2 to the power of x is equal to log 20 to the power of 8. Now, an important property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent b to the front of the logarithm. So this would be equal to b times log a. So in this case, for both log 2 to the power of x and log 20 to the power of 8, I'm going to be using this property. So for log 2 to the power of x, I'm going to move the x to the front, and log 20 to the power of 8, I'm going to move the a to the front. So now I have x times log 2 is equal to 8 times log 20. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by log 2. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to 8 times log 20 over log 2. Now, if I have something in the form log ab, this is equal to log a plus log b. So in this case, 20, we could rewrite as log 10 times 2. So this would be equal to log 10 plus log 2. So now I have x is equal to 8 times log 10 plus log 2. Now I have this over log 2. Now log 10 is simply equal to 1. So now I have x is equal to 8 times 1 plus log 2 over log 2. Now, this is the same thing as 8 times 1 over log 2 plus log 2 over log 2. And log 2 over log 2, these two simply cancel out. So I'm left with x is equal to 8 times 1 over log 2 plus 1. Now, if I distribute the 8 to both terms, I get x is equal to 8 times 1 over log 2 is 8 over log 2, plus 8 times 1 is 8. Now, log 2, this is equal to approximately 0 0.301. So I have this plus 8, and now 8 over 0 0.301. That's going to equal 26.57 plus 8. So my final answer is 34.57. All right, so I have 3 to the power of x squared plus 2 is equal to 27 to the power of x. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change 27 here to 3 to the power of 3 because 27 is equal to 3 to the power of 3. So if I substitute in 3 to the power of 3 for 27, I get 3 to the power of x squared plus 2 is equal to 3 to the power of 3 to the power of x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 3 to the power of 3 to the power of x. That's going to equal 3 to the power of 3 times x, also written as 3 to the power of 3x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, then this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, x squared plus 2 is equal to 3x. 
Now to solve this, I'm going to subtract 3x on both sides. So now I have x squared plus 2, or sorry, x squared minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now I have a quadratic equation. And to solve this, I'm going to be using the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 3, and c is equal to 2. So I have x is equal to negative negative 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 3 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 2. Now I have this all over 2a, so 2 times 1. Now to simplify, negative of negative is positive, so negative negative 3 is positive 3, plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared, negative times negative is positive, so negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, minus 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. Now I have this all over 2 times 1, which is 2. Now I have x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 1, 9 minus 8 is 1, over 2. Now I have x is equal to 3 plus or minus 1 over 2, because the square root of 1 is 1. Now this gives me two equations. I have 3 plus 1 over 2, and I also have 3 minus 1 over 2. So for 3 plus 1 over 2, this is equal to 4 over 2, which is simply equal to 2. For 3 minus 1 over 2, this is equal to 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. So 2 and 1 are my values for x. Now to check, started with 3 to the power of x squared plus 2 is equal to 27 to the power of x. Let's first try x is equal to 1. So if x is equal to 1, now I have 3 to the power of 1 squared plus 2 is equal to 27 to the power of 1. 1 squared is 1, so now I have 3 to the power of 1 plus 2 is equal to 27. 1 plus 2 is 3, so I have 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 27, and 3 to the power of 3 is 27, so I have 27 is equal to 27. This is right. Now let's try 2. x is equal to 2. So now I have 3 to the power of 2 squared plus 2 is equal to 27 to the power of 2. Now 2 squared is 4, so I have 3 to the power of 4 plus 2 is equal to 27 to the power of 2. Now 4 plus 2, that is going to equal 6. So now I have 3 to the power of 6 is equal to 27 to the power of 2. Now 27 to the power of 2, that is going to equal 729. And 3 to the power of 6, this is also 729. So I have 729 equals 729. So x equals 2 is also a solution. So I have x to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 100. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power of 5 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 5 to the power of 5 is equal to 100 to the power of 5. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n. This is equal to a to the power of m times n. So in this case, I have x to the power of x to the power of 5 to the power of 5. And we can think of m as x to the power of 5 in this case, and n as simply 5. So, and also we can think of a as obviously x. So this would be the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So in this case, x to the power of x to the power of 5 times 5. And now this is equal to 100 to the power of 5. Now, 
If I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this can be written as a to the power of m to the power of n, right? Well, a to the power of m times n, this is also the same thing as a to the power of n times m. Meaning a to the power of n times m, this is probably equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. But because both of these two things are equal to each other, then this means that these two are the same thing as well. Meaning, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, I can also write this as a to the power of n to the power of m. So in this case, I have x to the power of x to the power of 5 times 5, and I'm going to rewrite this as x to the power of 5 to the power of x to the power of 5. And I have this is equal to 100 to the power of 5. So now 100 here, this is equal to 10 squared. So now I have x to the power of 5 to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 10 squared to the power of 5. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, remember this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So I'm going to be using this property for 10 to the power of 2 to the power of 5. So meaning this would equal 10 to the power of 2 times 5. And 2 times 5 is simply 10. So now I have x to the power of 5 to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 10 to the power of 10. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, then this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, x to the power of 5 is equal to 10. Now, to solve this, I'm going to be taking the fifth root on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to the fifth root of 10. All right. So in this video, I'm going to solve the problem 2 to the power of 25 minus 1. So to first start, I'm going to rewrite 2 to the power of 25 as 2 to the power of 24 plus 1. And then we have our minus 1 at the end. And the reason I'm doing this and rewriting 25 as 24 plus 1 so now I can use the property a to the power of m plus n is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 24 plus 1 is going to equal 2 to the power of 24 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. Now basically our goal throughout this video is to get to change our values to be as small as possible so then at the end we can do whatever we need to do with them to get our final result. So 2, two to the power of 24, how do we simplify this and make it even smaller? I can rewrite this as 2 to the power of 12 times 2. And another property of exponents is that if I have something in form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 12 times 2 is going to equal 2 to the power of 12 to the power of 2. And I have this times 2 minus 1. So now I'm actually going to plug in the actual value of 2 to the power of 12 because 2 to the power of 12 is small enough where we know the value, the exact value of it. So if you guys don't know what 2 to the power of 12 is, well, 2 to the power of 10, you should always remember this as 1024. So 2 to the power of 11 is going to be double of 1024, which is 2048. And 2 to the power of 12, which is the value we're looking for, is going to be double of 2048, which is 4096. So now I get 4096 squared times 2 minus 1. And now this is equal to, I'm going to simplify this, 4000 plus 96 squared times 2 minus 1. And the reason I'm doing this is because 4096 squared is really hard to calculate by itself. So if we change it with four, to 4000 plus 96 squared, I can use the property a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So in this case, a is 
4,000 and B is 96. So this turns into 4,000 squared plus two times 4,000 times 96 plus 96 squared. And I have all of this minus one. Oh, sorry, all of this times two minus one. Now 4,000 squared is equal to 16 million. Two times 4,000 is 8,000 and 8,000 times 96 is equal to 768,000. And now I have this plus 96 squared, which is equal to 9,216. And all of this I have times two minus one. So now I'm gonna add all these up. So if I add all of these up in the parentheses, I get 16 million. 777,216. So now I have this times two minus one. So if I multiply this by two, I get 33,554,432. And I have this minus one, which is equal to 33,554,431. So this is my answer to this problem.